morning. Don't mind me, I'm picking between colors from my kitchen, doing a little remodeling. I don't know, blue or blue? Uh, I want to let you guys know I was going to do a six month review of drinking mud water and no caffeine, but I got so excited about the results so far after only about three months that I decided to go ahead and do this video now. How do I feel? Do I feel any different? Well, I feel like some things are different, some things have changed, and some things are still the same. What are the good, the bad, and the ugly things about quitting caffeine? Well, I'll tell you all about it in this video. Hey, it's Kurt. Welcome to my channel where I review fitness products, do a cost analysis on them, then give them my own rating from my own rating system to help you decide whether they are worth purchasing or not. I buy all my products with my own money unless they are given to me for free by the manufacturer. If that's the case, I always let you know at the beginning of the video. I do want to let you know that I also put chapters in the description down below. So if you want to skip the intro and want to go straight to the results, just look down in the chapters and skip along forward. Seriously, it will not hurt my feelings. But for those of you who want to stay around and listen to a little more history about what happened in my change, little by little, stay tuned. Hey guys, I want to quickly interrupt this video to tell you something super exciting. It's all because of you guys and all your support. I just hit 2,000 subscribers on January 25th. I'm super excited because it was a full month earlier than I thought I was going to do it. And so now I've got a new goal to double my subscribers to 4,000 subscribers by July of this year. And with your help, I can do that. So keep liking and subscribing. I really appreciate all the support. Breaking away from drinking coffee has been a goal of mine for quite some time. Believe it or not, I didn't drink coffee till about four years ago. Now I did drink caffeine before that. I would have a Diet Coke in the afternoon or maybe two sometimes, but never coffee. The one thing that kept me away from drinking coffee when I was even in college was the fact that I remember going to classes in the morning and seeing people come to class looking just bleary eyed and blank face going, oh my God, oh my God, I didn't get to have my fix of coffee. I'm so tired. And I thought, ooh, I don't want to be like that. I'll never forget the first time when my girlfriend in college spent the night at my place and the next morning she woke up and the first thing she asked me was, do you have any coffee? And when I looked at her and said, no, I don't have any coffee, she stared at me with a blank face like I was from another planet. When I started working, I remember driving to work and seeing people lined up like zombies at Starbucks or some boutique coffee shop. I remember just driving by and go, addicted suckers, and thinking I was so smart because here they were waiting in line to pay $5 a cup or more for a cup of coffee. And in the meantime, I was drinking Diet Cokes where I could buy for like, I don't know, 50 cents to a dollar, maybe spend two bucks a day max or even get it for free at work. And I thought it was so smart. But after thinking about it, maybe drinking Diet Coke wasn't so smart either. That all changed later on in life when I went to Spain and Portugal for a couple of weeks. I think I got kind of seduced by the Spanish lifestyle of eating dinner late and then going out and grabbing a cup of coffee later on at the cafe after being up very, very late and going out and having a good time. I drank my first latte over there. I thought it was okay, but everybody else was drinking coffee, so I kind of got into it. And as the a couple of weeks went by, I started drinking coffee every day, and by the end of the trip, I was hooked. Not only was I hooked, but I turned into a coffee snob almost overnight. Yes, embarrassing, I know. But I would only drink French press coffee, and I would only go to the boutique coffee shops, and was ordering drip coffee at these hipster places, and I thought I was so cool, and I was really getting into the whole coffee thing, which is very interesting, I have to say. It's kind of like wine tasting in a way. Needless to say, I loved it. But as the months rolled on, I found myself getting more and more dependent on coffee. I remember starting off at one cup a day, then I moved to two cups a day, then it was three cups a day, and then sometimes it was four cups a day with having one at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Unfortunately, I was turning into one of them, these walking drones who needed coffee to survive. Not a good thing. So when I did finally decide not to drink coffee in November, I thought it'd be kind of a fun little trip. I thought, oh, I'll do this for a week, I'll feel fine, I'll keep going, and I won't drink coffee, and then, who knows, maybe down the line I'll start drinking coffee again. Little did I know that my no caffeine, no coffee journey was gonna be as hard as 
It was. As I slowly started weaning myself off coffee by using mud water, I did notice a couple things. One, mud water tasted pretty good and earthy and I liked the flavor of it. It was, it was replacing it little by little. But the other little thing I noticed was I was getting this little headache and the headache kept increasing the less coffee I used. So the first couple mornings I'd do like mud water and then a cup of coffee and then two mud waters and then a cup of coffee later on and then finally just all mud water and the more coffee I took away the more my headache increased and I had a headache no joke for at least a week and it hurt and it really wasn't comfortable. I've heard a lot of people say this when they stop drinking caffeine. But after about a week and a half, I felt pretty good again and normal, and I kind of felt like this euphoria, like, wow, my headache's gone, and you know what, I'm not really missing coffee right now. Did I have decaf during this experiment? No, I didn't have decaf coffee for a while, or at least at first, because I thought, I just wanna stay away from any sort of coffee whatsoever. I don't want anything to remind me about normal coffee and maybe have me, who knows, start getting seduced back into drinking coffee. So I just kind of went cold turkey and all that stuff. I did do some research on decaf coffee because I thought eventually I'll probably drink some. But one of the things I found out is that it's a very strange way how they take the caffeine out of roasted coffee beans. A lot of times they use these chemicals that are not great for you, chemicals that I've never even heard of before. But I found an article on how they do that, and let me tell you a little bit more about it. Generally, decaffeination involves waterlogging coffee beans when they're still green before roasting so that the caffeine inside can be made soluble, meaning that it can be dissolved. But there are different ways of washing the caffeine out of the beans. Companies that use chemical solvents have switched to other substances. Predominantly ethyl acetate and methylene chloride, although there has been some controversy about the latter because exposure to high amounts of the substance can be toxic and lead to damage of the central nervous system. The FDA has ruled that minuscule trace amounts of methylene chloride in decaf coffee are not cause for concern and residues of more than 0.001% are prohibited, so at least that makes me feel a little bit safer. Another method called the Swiss water process was first commercially used in the 1970s. It is explained that first a batch of green coffee beans is soaked in water. That water becomes saturated with all the soluble components found in coffee, including chlorogenic acid, amino acids, and sucrose. The caffeine is then filtered with carbon. This uncaffeinated liquid called green coffee extract is then added to columns of new rehydrated green coffee beans that still have their caffeine. That caffeine migrates from the beans to the green coffee extract as the beans and liquid seek equilibrium until the beans are almost entirely caffeine free. This is probably the safest way to make decaffeinated coffee and luckily one of my favorite coffee companies, Coffee for the Arts, makes their decaffeinated coffee this way. So here's a quick note, if you're gonna drink decaffeinated coffee, just make sure it's Swiss water processed. You just have to look up on the internet and see what companies do that. And I put an article in the description box below so you guys can check it out and do a little more research. Did you get tired of drinking mud water? I didn't get tired of drinking mud water at first because it was so new to me and I would kind of mix up the flavors by one day putting oat milk in it, the next day I'd put a little protein collagen in it, the next day I'd put the, I don't know, almond milk in it. So it was pretty good for the first month. And the cool thing about mud water is it comes with this little recipe book where you can look at different ways of making mud water more exciting over the days that you use it. I hadn't used any of those recipes yet but I might look into them. But after about a month, I gotta admit, I was getting a little sick of mud water and I thought I gotta try some of this Swiss water processed decaf coffee to see what that's all about. Did drinking decaf coffee make you wanna go back to drinking real coffee? I gotta say kinda yes and kinda no. Kinda yes, cause it tasted so good and kinda no, cause I didn't wanna drink caffeine anymore. And there were other benefits of me drinking the decaf coffee too. I got to mix it up with the mud water. So I'd have one mud water in the morning and one cup of decaf coffee. It really helped my mornings out a lot. And the price, mud water is expensive. It's like $1.33 a cup where coffee is like 91 cents a cup. So I started ordering mud water and then I thought, wow, I'm going through two or three of these a day. It's getting kind of expensive. I gotta get some decaf coffee just to cut the price down and make it more palatable. Although I did find a way to make drinking mud water less expensive. I found I don't actually need a whole tablespoon of the stuff to make a cup. I only need about a half a tablespoon to make it 
and I still get some residue at the bottom of my cup. Did you ever slip and drink a real cup of coffee over the three months? I did, but not on purpose. I remember going to a boutique coffee shop with my buddy, and when I got there, I went to the cash register and asked the girl for a decaf coffee. She kind of looked at me kind of strangely, and I thought, hmm, something might be wrong, but I didn't really think about it. And she said, okay, so she rang me up for a decaf. I had a decaf oat milk Olay. And when I picked up the coffee and I went back to the table and tasted it, I thought, wow, this is really good decaf. This is amazing. After about 10, 15 minutes, I felt this kick come in and I thought, oh man, this is not decaf. This is regular coffee. So I went back to the girl at the cash register and I said, I think this isn't decaf. And she looked at me, she said, oh yeah, it's not decaf. We don't have decaf coffee here. So we just put a little bit of an espresso shot in there and then kind of watered it down with a lot of oat milk. Needless to say, I never went back to that place again and ordered decaf coffee. How long do you think you're gonna do this whole caffeine free thing? I don't know, but I'm feeling pretty good right now and I don't wanna go back to drinking caffeine. And it also gives me the ability to explore things like low caffeine teas or green teas or white teas or other drinks without caffeine in them. And it's really hard because I love, you know, eggs and protein pancakes and what goes great with that is coffee. So I gotta find other alternatives. What have been some good things that's happened to you since quitting coffee or caffeine? I have noticed that I've been sleeping better at night and that's a big bonus because I've been really working on trying to get eight hours of sleep a night even though I haven't worked myself up to that. I think I'm up to about seven now, which is way better than before, which it was like six hours. But when I was drinking coffee, I did notice I would wake up sometimes at three o'clock in the morning just staring at the ceiling. I would get up out of bed because I knew I couldn't go back to sleep. I start doing some work till 4.30 in the morning and I get tired, I'd go back to my bed, sleep until my alarm went off at six o'clock and just wake up just totally exhausted. And of course, drink coffee when I was drinking coffee. Now I have noticed that those nights come a lot less frequently, which I'm super happy about. And I know the sleep process is so important because it helps basically get your body back right. It helps heal your body. And if I can get at least eight hours sometime, I'll be super, super happy. I've also noticed I don't get like this anxiety that I was feeling when I had a lot of coffee. I'm a lot calmer. I would say not 100% calmer, but I'd say 40%, which I really notice. And I've also noticed that I've just kind of slowed down a little, which is nice. Another strange thing about not drinking caffeine or coffee is that I notice that sometimes when I'm fasting and trying to get through those long periods of no food, I'll get hungry and I'll drink coffee, or I used to drink regular coffee to help me through. But then I noticed that if I drink too much caffeine, I would actually start getting hungrier again, which is funny because it actually had the opposite effect. So not drinking caffeine keeps me on a more even keel for some reason. I don't know if that's scientific, but that's just what happened to me. Well, that's been my experience so far. I've been pretty happy with it. I'm just gonna keep not drinking caffeine and see how it changes my life. Who knows, you can do tiny little things I've found that change your life. It's not huge actions you have to take sometimes. Sometimes it's very tiny actions that you take and little by little things change. So I have noticed things changing for the better and I like that, so I'm gonna keep going. We'll see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And of course, subscribe if you want to and hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified of all my new videos coming out. They come out every Tuesday, by the way. And if you guys have a product you want me to review and enough of you talk about it in the description below, I might even do a review on it. Of course, finally, you can hit me up on KurtFitBy, which is my Instagram handle and I post there at least two times a week on other things fitness. I'll see you in the next one.